welcome to my YouTube channel and my craft room. I'm Shelley with JNS Hobbies and Crafts, and I've created a new mini album tutorial for you featuring the Couture Creations uh, Enchanted Tea Party paper collection, along with the die cuts. Now, if you are a beginner and just stumbling upon my YouTube channel, uh, know that don't judge a book by its cover. Uh, beginners are making these albums every day and they are step by step. It kind of feels like we're all in the same room crafting together. Um, I take it slow and I show you exactly what I'm doing so nothing's left out. And I want to mention um, I got together with Renee of Renee Bouquets and she has these gorgeous butterflies and dragonflies. She is an incredible artist and she hand makes these and that's what I used in this album. So in a moment, I'm going to show you the album up close and the pages inside. And I have to give credit where due. Uh, this album would not have come out even half as good if I used other brands. So um, thank you, Renee, for getting together with me on this. And um, let's move on. So we're going to take a look at our project we'll be making today closer. This was made with the Enchanted Tea Paper Collection. And as I said in the introduction to this, you don't have to like tea. This just came out uh, beautiful. Um, here we go. So we have an 8.5 by 6.5 with a 3.5 inch spine. And here you will find the Renee Bouquet's embellishments, her butterflies, her dragonflies, and one of her specialty trinkets. And I'm just going to take this around so you can see. And there's another one of her dragonflies. I just love her stuff. And there's one of her butterflies on the back. So now we're just going to open this up. And this was so much fun to work with. Okay, so what we have going on here is several things. We actually have three pockets. One right up front, one behind this pocket, and then one back here. Now all of my picture mats were created with the um, Heartfelt Creations Cut Mat Create, and I go over that a little bit more in the materials list and the end of the tutorial. This is a two-part tutorial, so I was able to get it all done. And I was able to make some of these folders. Over here, we have a pocket up front. And it's also a fold-out. And I have in here the new uh, Desire dies that um, You'll find out which ones I used here in the tutorial. And then here is a little pocket. However, with this, how I got these to work were with the Cut Mat Create. So all someone has to do is place their photo right in there. Over here we have a large side pocket and again I have some of the new Desire dies and you can see some of Renee Bouquet's beautiful uh, embellishments. And I just have some picture mats right in the side there. And this album will accommodate more picture mats than what I had. Now I was left over with a lot more paper so I could have made more. Uh, over here is just a, a waterfall. so. I'll just start flipping these up. And I did the hidden uh, hinge on here, but there is the option of doing it a, a different way, which I show you in the tutorial. Okay, this page. So again, we have almost like a triple pocket going on here. We have our front pocket in this little, and this is part of the die cuts that go with the collection, back behind the pocket, and then in this pocket. Over here, same thing, and here's another one of Renee Bouquet's spoons. Here's the 49th and Market flowers that are featured in this, and just a pocket.
Over here we have another little envelope pocket and you can stick little journaling tags or whatever you'd like in yours. And we have where we can just slide in picture mats behind here. And you can still get another one in there too comfortably. Oops. There we go. Over here there's several things going on. We have um, this pocket right up here. And this does flip up. And back here you can store cards back behind or picture mats. Uh, back behind this little die cut and these are pretty thick so we didn't have to back those. Over here, and I'll just leave that open, we have a side pocket, generous, to get our larger photo mats in there. And everything should slide in really comfortably so no hassle. Next page, we have a couple things going on here. Um, we have our front little envelope, which I did die cut something. I guess I put something a little too small in there. But this could be my little tag if I wanted. And then behind here is a pocket to slide things in and out. A pocket back here. And then this is a very large fold out, folding out. And I did not get my picture mats in there, so I'll be putting some in there, but that is a pocket. Over here, we have a flip out, so you can actually put photos in here and stuff. And This is magnetic, so even if you wanted to store something right like that, it will hold a picture mat. This flips out and we have another space and then we have a large pocket back here. To get things in and out of. And we come to the final page here. And this is a, a large pocket or envelope, whatever you'd like to call it. And um, it just magnetically opens and you can get generous sized picture mats in there. And over here there's quite a bit going on, so there's a lot of storage options. Here we have one of our uh, little envelope pockets that come with our die cuts. And we are featuring the 49th and Market flowers in this. They're all packaged flowers and the Rene Bouquets specialty embellishments. And there's a pocket where you can slide things in and out from behind. And uh, We'll go to this part. You, this is magnetic and this just folds up and you can put maybe journal something. You can store some free floating picture mats in here too. It should hold it all if you're using strong magnets. So, so up back here is a very large pocket so you can get larger picture mats in as well. So that is what we will be making today. The main ingredients is the paper pack that I used and this is by Couture Creations Enchanted Tea Party and this is the 12 by 12 size that we need and it is really cool. I've been so excited to get this in. It's been on back order for months. You're also going to want the matching ephemera set which comes with a ton of die cuts in here and it looks like we've got some pockets that are already in there to put together and um, definitely need that. I will be using the Coordinations Premium Cardstock and it's 110 pound white. For the album construction, we will be using chipboard. I'm using two sheets of 12 by 12 medium weight chipboard. And I do sell this in a value pack, which saves you quite a bit of money. Otherwise, you can buy them by the single sheets. 
you will need Tyvek and all Tyvek is is I have them in envelopes and I sell them uh, five sheets at a time, five envelopes at a time and all we're going to be doing is cutting uh, some strips off here and uh, this is a very durable uh, material and it helps keep our album covers and, and uh, the spine all together. I am using packaged flowers for this whole uh, album. Um, the ones I'm using are the 49th and Market and this is the Vintage Shades and this color is Blue Bouquet. Also with 49th and Market, the Vintage Shades, I'm using this style of a flower. And this one is Blue Blossoms. And from 49th and Market, the Shimmer and Shine. And this one is Ivory Malang. The frames that I'm actually using, this is something new from Prima. And this is the Frank Garcia Memory Hardware. And it's a resin frame, Chantilly Royal. And um, if you don't want to use that, if you want to use my Designs by Shelly DBS white frame, that will work perfect too. So it's up to you. I'm going to use this one. For our spine, I am using the Tim Holtz Baroque Frames, and there's two per pack. We only need one, so we will have leftovers for another project. Oh, looks like the camera has some glare, but this is what I was so excited about sharing with you. And a lot of you already know who Renee Bouquet is. And I am going to use several of her embellishments in here, and her prices are reasonable. Now, she does not sell to retail stores like me. Uh, we do have to go purchase it from her store. And I have a link up at the bottom right now of the video to show you where you can buy this and I'll go through each one and the name so you get the right one. It's also going to be located underneath the video in the description area right along with the link to my store to get the rest of your uh, supplies if that's where you'd like to purchase them. So when you visit Renee Bouquet's store uh, you, she has it all laid out for you. It's easy to find this. This is called Sweetheart Blue Glitter Glass Butterflies, and I got it with the black antenna. And they're located under Rene Briquet Butterflies. Isn't this gorgeous? This is the Ice Princess Anna Butterflies with the black antenna. Now we will have some of these left over to use in a different project, but for the majority, um, we're going to be using several of these in this project. This is the Tiny Treasures Peacock Feather Glitter Glass Dragonfly set. Can you see that? Absolutely gorgeous. And I've known Renee for some time, and she's totally legitimate for those of you that don't know. For those of you that do know her, you guys are nodding your head right now going, I know her. She's very well known for her butterflies and dragonflies. This is the Tiny Treasures Shabby Golden Roses Dragonfly Set. And these, you get uh, uh, several in here, and these are the Magical Miniatures Midwinter's Dream Butterflies. And then, we have the Renee Bouquet Silver Spoons Trinket Set. And you get several spoons in there. Magnets, you'll want a 10 pack of magnets for this. And I sell these, these are 3 8 by 1 16 thickness and they are super strong. For adhesives I am using the Art Glitter Dries Clear Adhesive Glue with the metal tip and that's what uh, you'll want the metal tip for yours as it will really control the uh, flow of your um, glue. Without the tip, as you see now, the glue will come out thicker and we really don't need that much so getting the metal tip is going to save you on this. And this is a two ounce bottle and there's also refills. You're going to want score tape and this is the double sided adhesive that I use and this is a name I totally trust. Uh, this is the quarter inch wide and you'll need probably one, one and a half to two rolls of this for this project. 
for trims. Uh, I am die cutting mine and um, a lot of you already got this from previous tutorials. I've used it so many times and I wanted to bring it back because it's just beautiful. Heartfelt Creations, the Regal Borders and Pockets, HCD1779. And then we have the Ornate Borders and Pockets, HCD1780. The new dies that I'm going to be using for trim accents is a new brand I brought in and I absolutely love it. This is Desire and it's called Elizabeth. And what it looks like is this. Beautiful. The next one I'm using by Desire is called Florence. And it looks like this. Flat back pearls, I'm going to use a variety. I have a bunch of flat back pearls. Um, if all you have is a 120 pack of one um, particular style, that's going to do you just fine. So let's dig out our flat back pearls and uh, we'll be using some of these in our album. I'm of course going to be using Bling on a Roll and this is the single row. And um, out of the package, I'm almost done with this, but there is a total of 10 yards on here, and it's just this, and it helps um, dress up our album a little. For my side closure, I am using uh, the Dritz Extra Large Hook and Eyes. You get three sets in here. We only need one. And this is the Nickel Plated Brass. For my pitcher mats, um, I... I used these in the album, and these are the Cut Matte Create, and there is one A and one B, which go together, and then there is two A and two B that go together. And this is something that I saw a video from Emma on, and I never realized how much of a time saver this was, and how cool these actually are. Um, since we don't do picture mats together, I will be showing you um, at the end of the tutorial how to use these. Um, you'll see in the beginning of this uh, tutorial the overview and I kind of show you what my picture mats look like after using these. These are a great tool. Now I did get uh, the set in my store uh, at discount, meaning um, when I bought them, I wanted to extend the offer out. Now I am limited on the bundles, so I'm selling them four at a time because you use them all uh, for the different shapes and stuff together. And um, they normally retail for like $34.99 each. That's pretty expensive. Um, however, you can buy all four for the price of three. Now I am limited and once they are gone, they are gone from my store and then I'm gonna sell them um, in two packs uh, for the regular price because I can't, uh, I might uh, be able to put them on sale, but uh, I can't extend out or rain checks for getting four for the price of three because I got those in um, a special for you guys. So um, anyway, that will be at the end of the tutorial and I will show you exactly how they work. So that's all I can think of that uh, will be used in this album. So let's get started. Oh, one thing I do want to say really quick. I do use my hot glue gun for quick tacking. So you might want to grab yours as well. I'm using low temp so I don't scald or blister myself. We're going to start off with our two pieces of chipboard, and these are 12 by 12 size. On each one of these, we're going to measure over eight and a half inches and cut. And I'll show you what mine look like. So what you're going to have after measuring over eight and a half inches and cutting, whether you have a cutter or you're using your craft knife, you'll end up with this. Um, what we're going to do is put this one off to the side. We will get to this one in just a moment. Put this one off to the side. Now we have these two, okay? We are now 12 inches across. We're going to measure over six and a half inches on each one of these and cut. And I'll show you what mine look like. 
Now really quick, I've already cut uh, my first one and this is six and a half inches by eight and a half inches. So this is my cup, one of my covers. This leftover piece I'm going to set aside for another project. I can make a smaller album with it. But a lot of you question, what do I use to cut my chipboard? Now this is the Fiskars Precision Rotary Cutter. The blade never uh, dulls. However, it's not made for this thickness. It's made for light chipboard, paper, but uh, those of you that um, have one of these, uh, I'm going to show you. It is a little uh, difficult uh, to cut through it. However, it does make a good cut. When I'm using mine, I just hold it right here. I have it measured over. And then I bring this and I hold on and I just go just like that. That's how I get a good cut. And here's my other cover. This I'm going to use for another project for a smaller album. You have these left over. This one is for the other, put it with your other smaller pieces for a different album. Right now we should have three and a half inches and we are 12 inches. I want to cut this by eight and a half inches. So, and I like to bring my blade over on this side. It's easier for me to push than pull. Um, if you have a different way to cut yours, um, by all means, if you like using your craft knife, um, I will show you a trick with some of the cheaper um, cutters that are out there. If you have one of these, the cheaper style uh, cutters, it is possible to use it. Um, your blades will always dull out though, um, cutting on chipboard and then trying to cut your paper. Uh, you'll be burning through these um, blades uh, very quickly. So I have mine marked with a pencil since I don't have a thing that comes out, but I'm just going to line that right up where it needs to go and make sure this stays straight. So if you run your blade once through, uh, it probably will not cut all the way through. Okay, um, you can flip it over and again I'm going to mark it with my pencil first to make sure I get an accurate cut where it's supposed to be. So I have a cut on this side and I'm going to cut it on this side now and I'm going to hold it straight and I'm just going to cut right back through where I cut before and then it will release. So that is another way for those of you that do have but beware that cutting the chipboard does uh, dull that blade and you'll be running through blades. Uh, in the past before I got this other one I actually had two of these. One was just for chipboard and one was for just cutting my paper. This little scratch piece you can put off to the side to use for a different project. Let's assemble our, uh, let's start uh, getting the rest of our pieces together to assemble our album. So how we're going to do this is we do need to cut our Tyvek strips. But this is our spine piece and um, if you were cutting yours and you have a side that's rough, you'll want to point it in towards the middle here. So just check to see. I'm pretty good. But you'll put your rougher edges towards the inside. Let's get our Tyvek out. Okay, I've already cut on my envelope, but all we need, and mine's doubled up, so I'm just going to need to do one um, cut. But on your envelope or your Tyvek, you're going to need two strips. Um, since mine are together, like I said, I'll be making one cut. I'm going to measure over one inch and cut. Okay, I am done with this. I have plenty left over for another mini album. So since mine was doubled up as an envelope, and don't worry about these little creases here, I'm still together. So I am going to measure over eight inches now and cut, and then that will give me two pieces that are one inch by eight inch. So this is what we have. Let's get our scoring board. And we are one inch across, and we're going to score each one of these at a half inch. 
Now Tyvek will move around, it's flexible, so just do it the best you can. Sometimes it's off, it's not a big deal, and sometimes it's easier just to move it over so you can get a better grip at it. So half inch on both these. If one side is slightly bigger than the other, don't worry about it. Tyvek has a mind of its own sometimes. So now all we're going to do is fold on those score lines that we made. And let's set our chipboard off to the side for now and get our score tape out. We're going to lay a piece of score tape two pieces, and if they overlap, it's fine, but you don't want to get it on the crease line. So just to the right of that crease line, I'm going to place a piece of score tape. And I'm also going to lay a piece over at the edge, making sure that I don't go over the edge. So mine is going to overlap especially because when I was scoring it, it did move. Now on this side, I'm going to go just to the left of that score line and place my score tape. And again, at the edge, making sure not to go too uh, over the edge, that left edge there. Okay. One thing you're going to want to do is once you have that tie back down is you're going to flip it over. If you can see any score tape peeking over the sides, you'll want to clip it off. So that is what yours should look like. And now let's do the same for this one. Now one thing about score tape I do want to uh, advise you on is that you're going to want to try to keep your hands off the, their fingers off the adhesive. Now it's impossible for me to do it. I'm always getting my fingers in it. Uh, you will want to make sure that you uh, wash your hands with uh, soap and water to get off any oils on your fingers as well as lotion. Um, <clears throat> what If you do have lotion on your skin and, and or oils, uh, what's going to happen is when your fingers actually touch that back adhesive part, um, it's going to take the potency off of the score tape. And um, it's not going to hold like it should. So that is a tip for using uh, score tape. Alrighty, we have two of these. Now when, on this particular album, we're going to do something um, just a little bit different than in, in the past I've done. Now, you, generally when I use a white cardstock with a black uh, chipboard, I usually wrap the edges. But on this one, I'm not going to wrap the cover. Um, I'm going to leave a little black around the edges of the front and back and the spine. And so I'm also going to be doing that in the inside of the album. And you'll know what I'm talking about in just a moment after we get this assembled and we start laying our paper. Um, if you have a craft knife handy, um, it helps to get this backing up so your, your fingers aren't getting into it. And it's kind of hard using your fingernails to try and get the backing off this. Grab your ruler and a pencil at about a quarter inch down, just make a pencil line on each side as best you can. And from the bottom up, we're going to do the same thing. Quarter of an inch up, make a pencil mark on each side. Okay. That's going to help us when we do place this to keep us centered. We are eight and a half inches this way, and our strips are eight inches long. So I'm going to do this first one. This is our spine piece, and I'm going to remove the score tape backing off one side only. Okay, so this is the sticky side, and I'm going to, like I said, it's almost impossible. 
sticky sides this and I have the crease this way, the open ends here. So all I'm going to do is place this right down on that lower pencil mark and press and I'm all the way to the edge as you can see. So once I have that I can pinch these two together and just line it up all the way down on that edge. If you get some crinkles, it's okay. Don't worry about it. You're not going to see it. Let's grab um, our cover. And we're going to remove this side of score tape. And we'll get, we'll get going faster once we start uh, getting into the album after you've um, experienced how to make the pockets or how I teach. <clears throat> but I do start these, <clears throat> excuse me, off very uh, slow so that the beginners can get the hang of this. So all we're going to do right now is we're going to butt these up side by side so they're even at the top and the bottom. And we're not going to leave a space in between. We're just going to keep those flush against each other and push that over and smooth it down. As you can see, our album's still going to open and close. You're not going to push it back because you will break the album. And um, we just want it to be able to open and close. So we're going to do the same thing on this side. Remove one side of your score tape. Okay, so I am going to pinch these two together. And I'm going to put this out of the way for now. The sticky side is here. The score line is here and my ends are open facing this way. So I want to now place this down like we did before on that pencil line at the bottom and right to the edge. And I'm just going to pull this right up to meet that other mark on the edge, press, and now I can smooth that out. Okay. I'm going to remove the score tape off this side. I'm going to butt these two pieces up. And I'm going to press over. And here is the base to our album. Grab a piece of white cardstock. We're now going to cut to cover our Tyvek. Cut two strips that are one and a half inches wide by eight and a quarter inches long. This is what you should have. Let's get our scoring board out. We are one and a half inches wide at three quarters of an inch. We are going to score each one and then we're going to fold on that score line. Okay, let's flip them over, over so that the peak is up. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to grab our score tape and we're going to lay it just to the right of that middle score line. And you'll only need, I'd say, two pieces. The second one is going to lay at the edge. And then we'll come over here just to the left of the score line. And then to the left edge. Whoops, this one's following me around. And we're going to repeat that for this. Once you've done that, flip it over. If you can see any score tape hanging over the edges, you need to clip that. So inspect your pieces. If you have any hanging over the sides this way, you'll want to clip that as well. Okay, we're going to make sure that these on this particular album um, that are spacing from top to bottom are the same. So grab your ruler 
and at one eighth of an inch on the spine, the side of the spine, make a pencil mark. Same over here on this side of the spine at one eighth of an inch. Get as close as you can and we'll do it again down here. And this will just help us to when we place our hinge. So I'm going to show you what this is going to look like. It's just a covered up. So like we, we laid this piece, we'll be laying this one. So, and the peaks for this side is going to face out. So if I was to lay that on the pencil, right on that crease, it's going to give us top to bottom spacing even. So I'm going to remove one side of my score tape here and place my first one. Okay, sticky side underneath the peak is facing this way and it's open ended this way. And I'm going to come right on down here and I'm going to press it making sure that that's even and I'm going to pull it all the way to the top and that should be even on that crease and then I'm going to smooth it down. Now I can remove this side and just press that right on over. Okay, let's do it for that side. Sticky side here, peak facing this way, open ended this way. And I'm just going to place that where I put my little mark and run it up that crease. And that should get you straight enough. If it's a little off, it'll be okay. If this is your first album, chances are you won't even notice any errors. So that is what you should have. You should have this left over from when we cut this. Cut this to eight and a quarter by six and three eighths of an inch. Grab another piece of cardstock and cut it to eight and a quarter and six and three eighths. So you should have two the same. Just set this off to the side. Let's get our score tape and what we do on this one, we're going to do the same on this one. So the first thing we want to do is take our score tape and go around the edges like a picture frame. So once you have it like that, what we're going to do is we're going to put one right down the middle and we will put two strips on either side of that to keep it from buckling up on us. And you can just as eyeball this as far as spacing. You don't have to be persnickety or anything, but mine looks like that. So let's do the same on this one. I got both mine done and it's ready. So the idea before I pull the score tape off and um, what I want to do is I'm going to line, this is the same height as our uh, Tyvek strip covers and the idea of this is to match it up top to bottom with that one and center this so that you have a black border of your chipboard around it without going over that middle crease line. If for whatever reason mine fits perfectly, if you need to cut your paper down just a hair more to give you a more comfortable fit, uh, do so. So mine's going to place just like that. I'm going to remove my score tape and place it and I'll show you mine as I do bring this right up here and what I'm first going to look for is the bottom and the top of that to match up and bring it over enough to where it does not go on that crease but it's straight. Do the best you can. By the time we're done laying our inner papers um, 
you're not going to be able to even tell if you're just a hair off. So, okay, so I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So I'm going to bring this on over. Oops, trying to keep my fingers out of it, which is almost impossible for me. Make sure that's down really good. So that's what you should have. Let's get ready to do our inner pages and we'll get that covered up. Okay, cut five pieces of your white card stock that are eight and a quarter inches by six and seven eighths of an inch. And once you have those, let's get our scoreboard out. I'm just gonna set that off to the side. We are eight and a quarter inches long at six and a quarter inches. Go ahead and score on each one of these. Once you've scored all your pieces, let's fold on that score line. Got mine all done. Now I have my peak up here. And we're just going to lay two rows of score tape. When you lay this down, you'll want to lay it just to the right of your score line, not to get it on there. And then you are going to come over to the right hand side of this and lay another piece right on down. Now after you get all of your score tape down on that side, flip it over. If you can see any score tape peeking out, you definitely want to clip that. So let's get all of our uh, score tape down and then we will start uh, planting them in our album. I've got all mine on and I've checked to make sure I've tri trimmed off any score tape. Now how these are going to lay, and this is a very easy way, I've taught this two different ways on how to hinge in your paper pages. Uh, this seems to be the easiest. It's kind of an L shape page with the hinge already attached. Once I remove the score tape, what I'm going to do is right here where that crease is, and I'm going to use this this uh, cover that I put there, that little strip, as my guide. This is going to place just to the right side of where I can see that score line, and it's going to fit from top to bottom and match up. But you want to make sure that you get it on straight and just to the right side of that uh, score line. And I'm going to place mine after I remove the score tape so you can see. But you, your album when you open it, so you might want to check yours first, just lay it down with the score tape to see where you need to be, Is should, should clear that edge of this page hinge here. I hope that made sense. So here we go. And this is probably one of the easiest ways to get your pages in and they do last and they won't tear out. So sometimes it's just easier to grab the side here and push it up against, match up your top and bottom where it needs to be, and then just press it down and fold it over. Okay, so you should not catch, it should be a nice crease. Okay, the next one, we remove our score tape, the backing, and this is just so easy, they just all fall in line together. All I'm going to do with this is plant the edge of this right next to the edge of this one, and it will fit, and you just keep it lined up top to bottom. Once it's down, you just press it down and fold it over, and you should get a nice, even fit. If you are a little bit off, it's okay, because what's going to happen is you're not even going to be able to see it. Once you have your pretty pages in um, and we're all done, chances are nobody's going to even notice. Okay, so our next one, the same thing. I'm just going to match up top to bottom and I'm going to push that right up against there. Oh, 
and fold it over. And the last one, same thing. So you should have, yours should look just like that. Now take a moment just to press down your pages really good on that spine. Make sure your score tape is completely down. Okay. Now one thing is if you're wearing nail polish like I had mine done and I've already messed it up is be very careful because sometimes your polish on white cardstock if you run it across will get polish on your book. Alrighty. So we're going to move on to decorating the outside of our book now. We're on to decorating the outside of our cover and what you're going to want to do is look at your album. If you notice, we have a larger gap on this side than that side. If you're looking at it and your larger gap is on this side, turn your album because the side with the larger gap is going to be the side for the cover of our album. Let's get our paper. So I generally go over this in the beginning of all of my tutorials is that we're going to make two piles off to the side. They're our reserve pile. They're also the same thing as a scrap pile. So when we have cut, like for example, our white cardstock when we were cutting our sheets for inside of our pages, you probably have some leftover trimmings. This is going to be pile number one, any leftover cardstock, um, so that we can use it inside the album to make the most out of our paper. Now, any cuts that we make that um, on our decorative paper will be pile two. And I will tell you what goes in our reserve, which is our scrap pile, and maybe I might have you hold something off to the side if we're going to use it right away. So the first thing we want to do is in our paper pack is locate this sheet. On the back, it looks like this. The first thing that we're going to do is if you notice at the top of your piece, you will have this trimming. Now we're going to go ahead and trim that off, but we're not going to throw it away because on the back side, it's colored and it's usable. So I'm going to trim that off. I've got mine off. I'm going to stick this in my reserve pile. Now if you need help with measurements, I do have a short little 15 minute video on perhaps it might help you with understanding um, the inch and an eighth or sixteenth uh, measurements. So it's how my husband taught me because I wasn't taught in school. So uh, you may want to look that up. Okay, I am going to turn, I try to stay consistent on how I show you how to measure so that we all have the same leftover sheet and scraps because I do use them. So I'm looking at mine sideways like this. I'm going to measure over eight and three eighths of an inch and cut. This is what you should have. Stick this in your reserve pile for now. Measure over two and a quarter inches and cut. Stick this off to the side for now. Now measure over six and three eighths of an inch and cut. Go ahead and stick this in your reserves for now. That piece that I had you set off to the side should be two and a quarter inches wide. At one and one eighth of an inch, 
Let's cut that right down the middle. Okay, let's get our scoring board out. And we're not going to score real hard. It's going to be a light mark. So I'm going to place this down. Even though we're one and one eighth of an inch wide, we're just going to score at the half inch really lightly. A real light score line on each one. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to bend it. We're not going to press it and crease real hard. We just want to bend it a little right on that line. And we're going to do the same for this one. And I'll show you what we're going to do with it. Now we have this decoration on the outside. This is the inside. Okay. What we're going to do is actually just place this right on the side here. So flip these over. The peak is down. And we're going to grab our score tape. And just to the right of that score line, we're going to place a piece of score tape. And we're also going to put it right along that edge and it's going to overlap on one side. And then we're going to go to the left of the score line and do the same thing. It's kind of like how we did the Tyvek and the covers for the Tyvek. And let's do it on this one too. And remember, let's clip off any score tape that is peeking over the edges. So I've got my score tape on both of these. And what I'm going to do is remove one side of my score tape to start. And I'm just going to make sure that this hits the crease and I'm even from top to bottom. And I think that that's about a sixteenth of an inch or so um, of the black should be showing. But you want to make sure you have that black. Uh, because when we lay that paper down, it's this is what's going to keep us straight going across. So I'm going to do my first one and do the best you can. It's not hard at all. It's easiest to do one side of your score tape first. And I'm just going to lay this down, just like so. And get the top part down first. Now, it may be easier if you um, hold it up like this to do it. But I'm going to, because it's kind of weird how I have my um, camera set up, um, I'm just going to do the best I can here and place it. Okay, so I got that one. Now I'm just going to remove the score tape from this other side. Okay, this is where you're going to want to hold your album up just like this so that the sides are coming out even with the sides of the spine. Not like this, not like this, but as straight as you can get it like this. I like to stick my hand on top of it to hold it steady. I'm going to take this hand and go right in the middle and push it over. And Actually, I'm going to try and lift this, try, so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to push it in the middle first and then smooth up and smooth down. Okay? And then make sure that the score tape's on there. I'm going to do the same thing with this side. Whoops. Which way am I going here? I'll start like this. So I'm going to get the top making sure I am even, the top of this is even with this one. If you need to make a pencil mark or, or to do that, go ahead. And once I have the top one, I'm going to kind of press on it and then I'm just going to bring it down like so. And then I'll just smooth that out. 
So now, and your album's going to be stiff for right now. Okay. Again, hold it up so that your sides are even outward. Push in the middle first and then smooth up and then smooth down. And once you have that, you can go like this. Make sure it's down. Now I like to split my album in half. I just pull my pages now and put it down. I take my two nails and be careful if you have um, nail polish on. I better do it like this. And I just rub my two fingers down and make that crease straight. Making sure all that score tape is getting down. Without getting my polish. I should probably go remove my polish, to be honest. And then that way, and then carefully open it. And then you should be fine with your creases when you're opening and shutting your album. Okay? Alright, so my front is right here, the cover. Grab your cover sheet and flip it over. Let's start off by applying score tape around the edges like a picture frame. And if it's easier for you to just cut strips, for instance, come up here, tear it off, and then go the other way, like so here, then do so. I just kind of wrap mine. Okay, so next thing we want to do is we're going to put a second line of score tape down each side here. We do have the side closure to install, so um, we're just going to make sure that we're all evened up here. So one down the middle, and we do have some embellishments uh, quite a bit on the cover, so I am going to stick two more pieces of score tape on either side of this middle point so that there is no buckling of my paper. Okay, so there is the back, this is the front, and before I take this off, I'm going to show you really quick what I'm going to do. I'm going to remove my score tape, and I am going to place this. Now, in placing this, you're going to want to make sure that the top of this is even with the top and bottom of this side piece here. But you're also going to want to make sure that you leave a black border on the side going around your album. So mine, when I have it done, should look like this. Okay, so for me, I'm going to look at my album like this. And again, it's hard to keep your fingers out of this. Make sure I have that black border, but also make sure I am even with the top and bottom of that strip. And now is where you can open up your album and really press that down really good. And if you get it a little bit off again, once you get your embellishments, nobody's going to notice. Let's cut our paper for the back. In your paper pack, you will have another one of these. Let's first take off that trim piece and then we'll stick it in reserves. Again, let's turn it looking like this. Measure over eight and three eighths of an inch and cut. Stick this piece in our reserves. Measure over six and three eighths of an inch and cut. Stick this piece in our reserves. Let's flip that over. This is the side that's going to be looking out, and this should be a good fit. Let's apply our score tape like a picture frame right on this. Now let's apply score tape, another one, on the sides. We do have a back closure, and we do want to make sure that when it's down over here, there's no chance of it lifting. I put one down the middle and two in between, just like I did for the cover. Although we don't have a ton of embellishments, I think this is the best way to do it, so there's no chance of any buckling or bulging of our paper. So I'm gonna remove the score tape, and we're gonna do the same um, placement as we did the cover. I 
I've got the score tape backing off there. Now make sure you're looking at your album the correct way. This is the front and just bring it on over this way. It's no fun having this the wrong way, placing it down and end up being upside down. So I am just going to line this up with the bottom there, making sure I have a black border and place it. Slip my album down the middle and press that down really good. Okay, while our album is open like this, in your reserves you will find this sheet. And this particular one is an exact fit top to bottom with those little hinges and it should fit right in between these. So this is how it's going to lay out. And on this side, I'm going to go around the edges like we have, like a picture frame. I'm going to put one down the middle. We do have a metal embellishment going there, so I think I'm going to place two pieces in between so there's no buckling when I place that. And now I'm going to remove the backing. Okay and I'll match up the top. Get that placed comfortably in between there. And lay it down. And if you have to use your nail to push it underneath that little lip if you have one. And that is it. And that's what yours should look like. Nice, neat, and clean. So I'm going to prop my album up here with something so that you can see better. And I have my oval frame. And this is such beautiful paper in the background. And just placing it without putting something behind, it's going to look good for what we're going to be doing. So apply glue to the back of your frame. And all we're going to do is center it side to side, top to bottom, as best we can. Just like so. And I think that's pretty even there. Good enough. And I need to let that dry for a moment. And I need to get this back up underneath there. Okay, while our frame, uh, the glue is um, drying, let's get into our drits. And um, that's what that is. Now the one that we want is the flat one. This one we will install when the album is complete. But you may want to keep it to the side here for helping to measure how much depth. Now, all I'm going to do is place some glue on this metal. And this is the art glitter glue and it will hold it and it ain't going to go anywhere. All I'm going to do is place it down somewhere in the middle so that I still have enough room for this to get in and out. I think mine's pretty straight there. Now once I have it there, if you have a binder clip, that will help or if you have um, one of these clamps. And I'm just going to hold it down. Make sure that I can get in there still. Mine kind of moved when I it. And we'll just let these dry. Grab a couple flat back pearls and I am just going to plant some glue right here. I better put it on the back of that too. And that's going to take a moment for it to dry too. Especially um, plastics or resin on resin. I'm going to give mine about 10 minutes to dry. If you are working with one of my frames, stick one right at the top, right up there. Glue it down there. And what you can do is come down here and glue another one right there. 
So it's up to you which style frame you're using. You may be using something totally different. So while everything's drying, I'm going to go get me a cup of coffee because it is coffee time for me and I need uh, a little energy here. I'm kind of tired this morning after Memorial Day weekend. So in your die cut set here, locate this, and I'm not sure if you can see this real well. But what it says is there's a place like no place on earth, a land full of enchantment, wonder, and mystery. And we're just going to lay that right up here. And I'm going to add some glue. And it's just going to be laid just like that. And it's going to take a moment for that glue to grab. Make sure you get it in there. Okay. Also, in your die cuts, you're going to find the little clock. And that goes right over here. Now, when gluing this down, make sure that the side does not go over to where you can't get the side of your, your um, the hook in there. So if it's easier if you just lay your hook in there for now. So that you make sure you can get it in and out. And I am going to press the top of the, the timepiece down. And again, clamps help. I'm going to get into this flower pack. I'm going to grab one of the leaves. And I'm going to glue it down. And I'm just going to lay that right on the frame. So I've got a few of these that I clipped off of this in this pack and I am going to use some hot glue to kind of keep these together and again I am using a very low temp so it does not burn me. So I bent mine slightly. I'm going to take my hot glue gun, just put some glue and just glue that right on down. There is another leaf in this pack, and I'm just going to add some glue down here. <clears throat> okay, the larger flower, and when I apply glue, I'm just going to apply it to the middle for now. And I'm going to set it right here. Now, in your die cuts, you will find this, and we're just going to maneuver that right underneath the flower there. Okay. If you need to add a little more glue when all is said and done, go ahead. And I'm just going to put some glue down here. I'm going to get into this flower pack. I'm going to get into the lighter color. Now they do have these. I'm taking mine off. I don't need it and I'm going to glue this one right here. In your die cuts you will find the hat. I'm going to apply some glue back behind here, lift up my flowers, and position that right here. I'm in the Rene Bouquet spoons and I'm going to slide this right underneath some of the flower petals there and glue that down. I am going to use my white glue for this and I'm going to give it time to dry. Just slip it in there. I have another one of the lighter color flowers and it's going to go right here. I missed it. There we go. Now, in the Rene Bouquet um, Dragonflies, it's the Tiny uh, Treasures Peacock Feather Glitter Glass Dragonfly set. And this one goes right here. And I'm going to use my white glue. And I'm going to make sure I get the tail too so it does not snag on anything. And I'm going to stick that right here. 
Now you may want to add a, just a little bit of glue underneath the wing to hold it down better so it does not catch. And I'm just going to bend these up just a little at the edges. Now I am in the Renee Bouquet's um, Magical Miniatures Midwinter Stream Butterfly Set and that goes right here. And I'm just going to make sure I get enough on there. And it is going down to the resin, so I definitely want to make sure that we allow it time to dry. I think that looks really pretty. I'm going to hold it up. In your die cut set, you will find a little heart on the back. Mine is white. I'm just going to add a little glue here. Just stick it right here. I'm in the Rene Riquet, and this is the Ice Princess Anna Butterflies with the black antenna. And one thing you'll notice that when you take it out of the package, it's dimensional. And I am going to add glue to the back here and some over here. Now one thing is, is I'm going to bend these up and back over. And I'm just going to place this right here. But you do have to hold it for a moment for it to grab. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some glue to the back over here of the wing. Once this side grabs, then you can put a little under this wing. And that will keep our butterfly from snagging. And I think that looks great. Let's get our bling out and we are going to cut a piece to fit side to side across the bottom. And we'll also cut a piece for the top. And then wipe up any excess glue if you have it seeping out. And I always found that um, grabbing a scratch piece of cardstock and using the edge of a piece helps with getting in there to get some of that overage of glue up. Okay, cut another piece and let's just glue that right on down the side here. Cut a couple more pieces, one that's going to fit right up from underneath the dritz all the way down the side. If you need to pull up your wing a little bit, go ahead and do that. And uh, also you'll want to cut a piece from here to here. And we're going to glue that down. Okay, out of this, grab this one and it's just going right here. So now what you're going to want to do is check your flowers and make sure that they're all down really good. If you need to add a little more glue in certain places, do so. But now what we have is an amazing cover. It's interesting and um, pretty. And we pulled out a lot of the colors, the blues and everything in here. So my bling is still drying. I'm just going to open up my album here and make sure when you open it you do spread them out so they don't get messed up. And we're going to work on the spine. In your die cuts you will find this one. Every story has a moral if only you can find it. However, we're not going to use this part. Uh, what we're going to do is grab our little Tim Holtz Baroque frame and we're just going to position this and it will fit just right so you can fit it in there as best you can just like that. So the first thing I want to do is cut this so that it fits correctly. Let me find my scissors. They were here and they got legs. Here we go. Um, it's, if it's easier for you to apply glue first and then cut around it then uh, do that and I'm going to pinch and hold it and cut. Now I'm just going to use my glue and that looks good to me. Okay, so I got mine back behind there. Now what I want to do is just add my glue to the back of the frame 
and I'm just going to place it. I'm going to grab another one of the Rene Briquet um, Tiny Treasures Peacock Feathered Glitter Glass Dragonfly Set. And it's out of this package. It's the same one we used up here. And I'm going to glue this down right on the spine. And when you glue this down, you definitely want to make sure you get your wings pretty good there and its tail so it doesn't snag. Just like that. So allow that to dry. Our cover and our spine, we are done. We are now moving in. Whoops, my bling is not completely dry yet. So I do need to wait for that before I do anything else because it's almost dry and I don't want it crooked. Okay, once everything has dried, and I'm going to make sure my bling is completely dry, we'll be moving on into page one. And how I do this is so that we can stay together on the pages. This is page one, this is page two, page three, four, five, six, and so on. We are on page one, but grab one of these cream colored flowers. Something's bugging me here. And just stick that right here. Perfect. Let's set our album off to the side and grab our sheet for page one. In your paper pack, you will find this print on the back. It looks like this. Let's trim off that trim piece. Stick this off to the side. We're probably going to use that here in just a moment. Okay, so um, all we want to do now is measure over six inches, that's the middle of the sheet, and cut. Now let's just double these up, measure over eight inches, and cut. Alrighty, so flip these over. These two pages are going to be for page two. Stick this off to the side and we're going to work with this one to start. Let's get some white cardstock and our die. So I am going to use the Florence die. Now one thing is for me, I like to have a nice clean looking um, package. So I found that in order for me to cut this without cutting off, lopping off this whole thing, is it was easier for me, and this is just a tip if, the, if you like to store yours in the original packaging too, is grab your cutting mat and just cut from here to here and try not to go through to the other side so that you leave yourself a little pocket. And then that way you can um, get your die plate in and out and um, store it back in with it not falling all out on you. That's just a little tip if you'd like to store yours like that too. Okay, my cardstock is eight and a half inches by 11 inches. Measure over six inches and cut. A smaller piece put in your reserve, so what we should have is six and a half inches by eight and a half inches. And what we're going to do is place our die plate, and these cut really good through 110 pound cardstock, so they're nice dies. Is we're just going to stick this all the way at the top, making sure we are even from this point to the top, this point to the top. But most importantly, you want to have even spacing from side to side because we want to be able to have extra over here to wrap around the back. So let's run this through our die cutter. If you don't have one of these tools, this one's the Spellbinders tool-in-one. Um, I recommend getting one because it just you just run it on the back of your plate and your pieces all fall out that need to come out of your to clean your plate. And then it also comes with the little pick to help get anything out. Okay, what we want to do at this point is from the side where your die is cut, you'll want to cut from here to here 
and from here to here to release this top portion. I like to stick mine on my paper cutter to make sure my line is straight on each side, even with each other. Once you have yours to this point, what we're going to do is lay a piece of score tape at the bottom of our main page piece here. And you'll want to make sure that you push that score tape down really good. And I'm going to remove the backing. Now I like to bend mine just a little and I'm going to make sure that I am even from side to side and bring this all the way down to the bottom. And I like to start from the middle and push out. It will raise this up a little bit and give you a little more spacing in there. And then all we have to do now is fold our flaps in. And this is where I like to use for quick tacking my hot glue gun. And we'll fold this one over as well. Okay, so you should have where your piece now will fit perfectly. And this is where I like to use my glue. And I'm just going to apply my glue on the back. Bring it down to the bottom of my cardstock. Okay, this piece. I'm just going to bring that right up to anywhere any white shows there. And it should be six inches. I'll use my pencil to help me out. And you can either put this on your paper cutter or cut by hand. Let's apply our glue and place this. And there is your pocket. In your die cut set, you will find this little pocket. And one side's this way, one's this way. Um, you're just going to want to fold these in. You'll leave this flap alone just like this. And this is a place where you can just use your glue and, and bring this on over the top. Wipe off any glue that's not needed. Um, I'm going to use this as my scratch piece of paper here. I'm going to slide this in to make sure that when I press down really good, no glue seeps on the inside. Now this is something where you can end up wrapping it over to close it if you'd like. I'm going to leave mine open. And once you have your sides glued, you should be able to go like this without it falling apart. And we are going to glue that down. And for this, I want to still be able to get something in here, like maybe a little picture hanging off to the side or something. So I'm not going to put glue on this side. I'm just going to put some glue on the other, on the bottom. And then I'm going to place it at a slight angle, like so. And I can wipe off any glue that seeps up. I'm in Renee Bouquet's Sweetheart Blue Butterflies. And that's going to go right here. And make sure you get the tail down. Now I did add a little bit underneath the wings and I'm just going to pop these back up a little just to make sure that it stays down really good. You should have this stem, and what I'm going to do is apply some hot glue back behind here. I'm going to lift this up. It should be dry, and I'm going to slide this <clears throat> right back behind like this. So I'll show you how, if any of these leaves come off, you can always add them back. But I am just going to be real quick about it because mine's a low temp. Pull it up and press down. I do have a leaf here I want to get back on there. You should have these flatter cream style flowers. 
and I'm just going to put here. Now, if you're going to make uh, close this, make sure that um, your flower you can still get it, or keep or put your flower down lower, whatever. But I'm going to keep mine right here, so I still have the option if I wanted to close it. This page, <clears throat> excuse me, this page is complete. Let's flip it over. Let's apply our score tape around the back like a picture frame. We are not going to mount this one in our book just yet. We're actually going to mount page two first, so then we can line up page one easier. And also, you have a leftover clipping. Put this off to the side with our page two. Okay, we're going to want to go one down the middle. And we do have some bulk here, so I'm going to put one about that size. Not the full length, but longer. And we're just going to set this off to the side for now. Page two. We set this sheet off to the side, this, and also this. So what we want to first do is cut a piece of cardstock that is six and a half inches by six and one eighth of an inch. And then let's get our scoring board out. At five, oh sorry, we are six and a half inches across the board. At five and three quarters of an inch, let's score. And at five and seven eighths of an inch, we're going to score. And then we're going to fold on those score lines. I've got mine folded. There is the outer score line, and then there is the inner score line. And we're just going to tuck that flap right back underneath. So they're both underneath there. And the reason why is we're going to be die cutting. And a lot of us, I'm working on a wider platform, so I could leave mine out and open. However, a lot of you have only a six inch wide platform on your die cutting machine. So with our flap is off to the right, we'll just push those back under. We're going to grab that same die plate that we used before. And we're just going to make sure that we are even side to side. You'll have a little white here, a little white here. But most importantly, in between here, 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 and here. Try and keep it as even as possible. And run that through the die cutter. Now one thing you will notice that when you're cleaning your die plate out, there are these little scrollies that pop out. Hang on to these. And the reason why is I may use these to accent some of our pages. They're like the perfect little scroll. So I've got mine over there. Okay. I'm, since there's only a little bit here and here, I'll just clip this by hand to release the top. And there we go. So take this piece and just lay it right down so that you have the same amount of white at the top and the bottom. Make sure you're straight on each side. And let's take our uh, pencil and make a pencil mark where we need to trim this to fit on the front panel of this fold out. And then we're just going to trim it. This trimming stick in our reserves and like I said, we're going to keep all scraps until the end of the tutorial. So just lay this down and make sure that your cut was good and that you have a white border. And I have a little bit of one showing off to the right. Let's set this off to the side. Let's get a pocket going here. Look in your reserves for a scrap piece of your white cardstock. Cut it down to two and three quarters of an inch by five and a half inches. And we're just going to keep this a straight edge up here. And what I want to do is just make a standard little pocket. So I'm going to lay my score tape down. Make sure it's down really good. Oh, 
I'm going to give this a little bend here and I'm going to make sure I have flaps on either side. I'll just place it at the bottom, start in the middle and push out. And you'll notice when you do that, this will kind of bow up just a bit. And then we're going to wrap our flaps around the back and tack it down. And there it is. Let's find our paper for this. In your reserves, you will find a long strip like this. Let's turn it over. Over here, we'll say a time for a cup of tea, but we're not gonna use that sentiment. What we are gonna do is just measure to fit this. And I am gonna leave um, a little bit of a gap up here. The reason why is this is gonna lay right on top of it, so I don't have to have it all the way up. So I'm going to lay this down so that I'm even on the sides. I'm going to make a pencil mark with where I need to trim down. And also I'm going to make a pencil mark right down here where I need to trim over. My first cut on this is going to be down and then over. And I'll show you what mine looks like. Here are my pieces that go in my reserves. And this is what I want. So I'm going to apply glue to the back of this. I'm going to bring it all the way down to the bottom and mount that. Next I'm going to grab this. I'm just going to put that right up there. Make a mark with my pencil where I need to cut. And mine is right on that line there. Apply glue and glue that down. Okay, so your panel should look like this. Again, remember, make sure that this is pushed all the way back behind. And what we're going to do is just center that and glue that together. And remember, your flaps off to the right and underneath. I've got mine together, and I think that looks really nice. Let's just flip that right on over to get a piece for in here. Now grab this back out of our reserves. It's the one that we were cutting on. Place this down and you will notice that it's a perfect fit side to side, leaving you a little bit of a white border here and over here. So we're just going to make a mark with our pencil down here and cut to fit. Stick this in our reserves. So grab one of your magnets and somewhere over here, not here, but over here. Just lay one down so that you know that your paper is going to cover it. And I like to put glue around that. Now I'm going to apply my glue to this and then mount that. Okay, and just make sure that's down really good for your magnet. Let's attach the fold out and then we will get the mate to that magnet installed. So what we have over here is the inner score and then the outer one. On the outer one now, pinch that to where it's flat. Just place it right like that so it hooks onto the back and looks like this. So once you have it in place, pinch to hold it in place. This is where I like to use my hot glue for quick tacking. If you feel that your paper slips while you're flipping it over, uh, take the time, stop, readjust it, and then pinch and flip it over. So your fold out should now be able to go like this and like this, and there should be enough spacing in there um, for anything else that we want to add down here. Let's get the mate to that magnet and make sure that since we had it all the way over like that, make sure you pull it back so it is flush on the side. It's straight. It looks straight. Now if you got yours on a little crooked, like let's say it's up more this way, it's not 
straight. This is the good. This is a good time to straighten it out and hold it in place where it needs to be. Now flip it over and just keep pressure to hold it all down. Let the magnet find its mate. Once you know where that is, play, place a little glue. And that's where it will be. You know these little scrolly things that came out of our die? This is a good time. I'm going to place a little glue on mine. And right there it goes. In your die cuts, you will find this little teapot with the clock behind it. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue right here and it's going to be popped up. Now this is a good time again to grab that scratch piece of paper or whatever you're using and place it in your pocket in case your glue squirts out. I do want this slightly higher. I think that's pretty straight and I usually press because then the glue will get on this and I can just remove it. Let's open this up. In your die cuts you're going to find these two. This one, the larger, and the smaller one. What I'm going to do is add some glue to just the corner here of this one. And I'm going to bring it down to where it's at an angle like so. Push those two together. Now what I'm going to do here is make a little side pocket. These are thick enough to where I don't need to back them with cardstock. So I'm going to put this right here, but I only want to put glue underneath this side and here. So I'm going to flip these over, put some glue down this way. And there you have it. You should still be able to get stuff in and out and just like a little pitcher in there or put several pitcher mats in there. This page, let's see if I wanted to add anything else. I probably do. Here's our other page. And yes, I do. I grabbed this flower, but I am going to pinch out this middle piece and I'm going to replace it with a flat back pearl. And sometimes I do that to dress up a flower just a little bit more, like so. And I'm going to place that right here. Now in this flower pack you will find this vine. We only need a little bit of it, so I'm going to clip it off. I'm going to apply glue to the back. I'll just lift one of these and place it down. There we go. Now this page is complete. Let's flip that over. We're going to place score tape around the outside like a picture frame, one down the middle and two on either side, about this size. This is the back of mine. So what we're going to do is mount this one in the book first and then we'll mount this one together. And um, we are going to mount page two together, so no worries. Let's get our album out. And that is the back. So I'm not going to take the sticky off the backing off yet because I want to show you um, the easiest way to mount this. So in your reserves, grab this. Okay, uh, what it's going to do for us is we're just going to slide it back behind our first page. It's going to help separate the white cardstock so that all we're concentrating on is the edges of the page we need to plant this on. And you're going to steer clear of the score line for our page hinge. Okay, so I think everybody can see here the white edges. All right, when you place this down, you want to give yourself about, I'd say, an eighth of an inch spacing between the edge of your decorative paper and that page hinge. So when I place mine, I'm going to just be watching right over here, but I'm also going to be looking top 
to bottom so that I have that same 1 8 inch of white cardstock showing. Okay, so I'm going to remove my score tape and place mine. And I'm going to try and keep my head out of the video, so hopefully I'll get mine on straight. Usually I need to lean over my book to see what I'm doing. All right, remember the, the fold out is on this side. Don't place it upside down. So I am looking over here and I can see that I'm about one eighth of an inch away from that page hinge. And I'm just going to press here because I can see that I've got enough space up there. If you don't get it exactly the same, it's okay. It's not a big deal. Again, once you have your pages in here, um, what's going to happen is when people open up the book, whether you're making it as a gift or for yourself, or maybe you're making my album so that you can sell them for a profit, I don't put uh, restrictions on any of my tutorials. Everybody is free to use them, make them, sell them. And a lot of people do, and I've helped them get going on that. But anyway, nobody's going to, once we get the other pages hit in here, nobody's going to be looking. Their eyes going to be drawn to the, the beautiful design in here and what you've got going. So a little bit of error is absolutely fine. So the reason why we place page two first is so that we can line up this, the top and bottom, to the top and bottom of our decorated paper here. And the reason also is because our chipboard cover is larger than our white cardstock pages because it's our cover. So when I remove the score tape on this, and I can see my black border around here, so this is going to be easy. I'm going to be making sure I steer clear of that inner hinge scoring line. And I'm going to watch the top and the bottom to try and get them the same. And sometimes I just push mine over as far as I can, still leaving the white and placing it. Now mine are going to stick out a little bit from the side and that's okay. It's going to look perfectly fine. It's going to look kind of cool having some sticking out there. As long as it doesn't interfere with your side closure here, well, you're good. All right, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to bring mine over and I'm going to try and keep my head out of this video. There's my hinge. I think the right there. I'm hoping anyway. <laughs> ah, all right. Now this is the part where you just absolutely have to make sure that you run your fingers around and get this down really good. Make sure on the sides over here we got it. So here we are page one and two <clears throat> and they look absolutely gorgeous. Those colors are amazing. I, I really love this paper. Okay, we are done with page two. Let's move on to page three. We're on page three, and in your paper pack, you will find this sheet. On the back, it looks like this. First thing we want to do is trim off this top piece, and then we'll put that in reserves. I'm going to turn my paper so it's sideways, measure over 8 inches, and cut. For now, stick this in your reserves, measure over 6 inches, and cut. Stick this one off to the side, that's going to be for our page 4, and we need to get some cardstock. Grab a piece of cardstock. And we are 11 inches this way. Measure over four and a half inches and cut. Stick this piece in reserves. I'm getting into the Desire Elizabeth die, which looks like this. Very pretty. What we're going to do is just center that. So if you want to measure up to get pretty even there, you can here to here. Um, 
just bring that to the edge and make sure you're even and run that through the die cutter. I need to clean my die cutting plates. <clears throat> okay, so this is what you have. Um, I'm going to stick this on my paper cutter and cut from the side of the die where it's at all the way down and from here up. And I like that when there's a lot of room here on either side, that's when I like to put it on the paper cutter to make sure my lines are straight. Okay, so this is what we should have. Now, we're going to die cut again and to lay over this. Um, in your paper pack, you will find this. First thing is trim off this top piece and put it in our reserves. All right, so I have mine trimmed off, and oh, on the back it looks like this, so that's easy for you to find in your paper pack. Just measure over four and a half inches and cut. The large piece goes in our reserves, and we are going to use the same die, and we will center this here and here, just like we did with this, and run that through the die cutter. Okay. <clears throat> now to release the top portion, we're going to do the same thing. We'll just cut from here to here and here to here. Okay, you will have this and what I'm going to do is stick this on my paper cutter from right here where it's clean. I'm just going to cut this down and cut this down so I have two, two squares here and then I'm going to put that in reserves. So this is what I did. This piece here we can throw away. We won't be using that. But to keep our cuts and our pile clean um, so that we can just grab, that's what we're going to do. Alrighty, so first thing we want to do is attach this and then we'll work with this. So grab your score tape and this is going to be a nice side pocket. And just run it down the side. All right. So for this, I want to get this centered, so as best I can. So I'm just kind of looking top to bottom, and I'm going to bring that all the way over to the side. And then I'm going to push out like that. And then we can just wrap our wrap our flaps around the back and tack them down. Perfect. Alright, so the reason why I had us just cut a long strip is in case you are a little longer down here, yours is sitting up farther, it's easier for us. So line this up on top of the other to find out where you are. And you can just make a pencil mark here and here and trim. Grab a piece of cardstock and it's going to be our scratch piece and just place it inside your pocket behind this. This is where we're going to apply glue and we don't want it to just in case we get sloppy with it we don't want it to go to our paper. So <clears throat> I'm going to apply some glue on this and also on this. And then when I place this on top of it, I'm going to slightly have it off-centered so you can still see some of that white. And I'll remove this so you can see what I'm talking about. So it's going to sit kind of like that. Okay. So let's do that. Alrighty, I have mine down and I think that's just absolutely gorgeous. Now this is a good time to look. If you have any where you miss the glue, perhaps there's one of these sticking up, you can just place a little glue there. Okay, so mine is slightly overhanging off the side and this is where you can just take your craft knife. Be careful not to cut into your uh, pocket, but it, you can definitely clean it up if you want to. It shouldn't be overhanging that much to where it's going to ruin our page size or not fit, but I am going to clean mine up. All right, 
I had cut down partially off this leaf for vine and I am going to glue this right across there and I am placing this back behind. I'm also grabbing the Rene Bouquet Sweetheart Blue Butterfly and I'm going to add some glue there. Now remember, if you put this back behind, you have to move it, especially if the glue is wet or you're going to get stuck. All right, we need a flower. Actually, I'm going to get into the Rene Bouquet of the Magical Miniatures, and I think I want to stick that one right here. In your die cuts, you will locate two things. One is another pocket watch. I'm going to apply some glue here to the back. Oops, slide this back in here. And I'm just going to place that right there. This one is Would You Like an Adventure Now or Shall We Have Our Tea First? I'm just going to put some glue on that and stick this right here. This page is complete. Let's flip it over. Score tape goes around the edges like a picture frame, one down the middle and two shorter ones on either side. And we will mount this in our book together. I've got my score tape on. <clears throat> Open up our book. Got my backing off. And what I'm doing is looking to make sure I'm away from the hinge. And I have approximately the same amount top to bottom. And if you get it a little off, that is okay. Like I'm a little taller here, and there's a little more down here. It doesn't matter, really. It's not going to ruin anything. When I do place in page four, I'll make sure to line it up with the bottom, and it will be just fine. It's just hard for me. I usually have to lean way over the book to see what I'm doing, but being that I have uh, the camera here, and that was a problem in the past when I started doing these. My head always got in the video. So that looks beautiful. Let's move on to page four.